And welcome back to Viewpoint for today. And of course, I won't even begin to try to deal with the biography or the whole lineup of this gentleman that is sitting before me. I'll tell you this much. His name is the Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas. Okay, <laughs> you get it. You know exactly where we're going here. And I'm so pleased to have him before me. I always wish that I had the opportunity to talk to this gentleman. I have him now, so I'm not even going to take up any more time. Good afternoon to you, sir. How are you today? I am fine. Good afternoon to you, Wendell. Get a little closer and to all of you. You hear that? You listeners hear the here on PJD2. Yeah. I must express how pleased I am to be here. I want to thank um, the president and the other organizing members of the organizing committee mm -hmm. of the um, independent St. Martin Foundation, which has invited me here over the next few days to observe your Emancipation Day. Mm -hmm. And I always look forward to interact with our people, people well, from the Caribbean. Well, well, listen, they're going to be picking your brains on the issue of independence, so you better have lots up your sleeve. Well, you know, I, I, I think I can handle myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. A yes. lot of people think you're very controversial, <laughs> but I know you believe in what you believe in, and you can defend it, of course. I can't speak for you, but um, how do you respond to people who think of you that way? Well, because, uh, you know, of the nature of the um, profession, the service that I have been providing over the last nearly 20, 30 years, to some extent it has taken me into controversial waters sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the type of personality I speak frankly and openly, mm -hmm. It may have encouraged others and may have, to some extent, uh, yeah. angered others. Yeah. So if yeah. that is the controversy, then maybe mm -hmm. we need to get rid of the controversy during this particular program. But That's in the same breath, I would like to also acknowledge that you are well respected as well. So how do you balance the two? Well, uh, <laughs> I hope I am, I am respected because I've always lived my public life in the interest of the people. Mm. Um, I've had an opportunity at a very relatively young age to be head of government in St. Kitts and Nevis and one of the leaders of the Caribbean who I believe made some contributions in advancing the quality of life of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis yeah. and the Caribbean region. Uh -huh. So I, I, I think to some extent um, that would put me in a certain, at a certain level. But a lot of what I have been engaged in has become controversial at times. And so I believe that's where we, mm. we, we bring the balance. All right. I, I don't have a lot of time. But I really need to get out of you yes. on the issue of independence. Yes. I know I would have to couple that word with challenges. But is there any good for any country that wants to go independence? And, and how do you see um, someone who aspires to become all like, let's say, us? Yes. Because you'll be speaking to that effect, no doubt. Good. Uh, but move the challenges out of the way. What, what do a people need to understand? in preparation for such an undertaking? Well, I think independence has to be an aspiration of all peoples, irrespective of where they are located geographically, irrespective of their past. But in our own context here in the Caribbean, especially in St. Martin, where so many people in this country are from countries that are already independent, I believe that the time has come for the people here to seriously consider mm -hmm. as to how they would advance to independence. Not if, but how and when that would be achieved. There are enormous benefits. First of all, first of all I believe it is important in one's development that political independence be aspired to. It is a natural evolutionary progression towards self-achievement. Um, and the people of St. Martin in particular, having been conscious of this and having created 
among themselves. The Independent St. Martin um, Foundation is a very critical step that has been taken by an organizing body to help to educate the people towards independence as they aspire and move towards it. Mm. It's only a matter of time. And so the benefits are enormous because any, any, any group of persons in any country would want to know that they can attain the highest um, political um, position that is allowed to them as a people. And here's where I think, therefore, that you have to weigh the pros and cons. You have to hear it on both sides. Those who are skeptical, those who are apprehensive, those who are hesitant, and those who are forcefully moving forward with the idea. Of course, I believe there has to be appropriate dialogue because there are obvious problems that would have to be ironed out. Here, for example, in St. Martin, a country, it is having two different administrations in the sense that there is the French colonial authority and there is the Dutch yes. colonial authority. If, for example, those on the Dutch side are more passionate in moving forward, and those on the French are a little more dormant with regard to this particular um, action. How do we marry those two? Maybe contending positions so that the people of St. Martin can advance together and progress with, an, uh, uh, with a better quality of life. Yeah. And that is why I'm saying that there has to be dialogue. dialogue. Not only among the people who are resident here on the island, but of two different European powers, but there has to be dialogue among those two European powers and dialogue between the St. Martin entity on the French side and the St. Martin entity on the Dutch side. Mm. So all this, I believe, can come about with dialogue. 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 That's the Communication. Mm. Talking to each other. Arriving at positions. And even if there are there are positions that have been arrived at that appear to be problematic. How can we together overcome these problems as we advance our people towards independence? What a, would you care to address the, some of the challenges in all this? Well, of for course. The of our listeners? For example, it seems as though there is a greater passion on the dot side to advance. Because you are presently in a particular government construct with, um, with Holland, with The Hague, where you seem to enjoy some aspects of semi-independence or greater autonomy. You already have a prime minister. Mm -hmm. I understand that the economy of St. Martin allows for some independence in advancing economic development by yourselves. If The Hague provides financial support, it must be maybe limited, and limited only to those aspects of the Constitution that she's responsible for. Justice, foreign affairs, right. and things of that nature. So you, you already enjoy a status that we enjoyed on our path towards full independence. In 1966, we had what we called statehood, which was seven independence in St. Kitts, Nevison, and Guerra. Mm -hmm. And then in 1983, we eventually advanced towards full independence. So at the moment, it would appear as if you are where we, where we were back in 1966. There are going to be some challenges because you have to speak with the French, who, as I said, don't seem at the moment to enjoy that kind of semi-independence or um, greater autonomy as part of the colonial construct that you have with the Dutch. France, it will appear, still considers St. Martin to be a department of France. Mm -hmm. That is a totally different political construct and governance to what you already have on the Dutch side. So how do you therefore advance 
as a people. And it seems as though the people here are interwoven very, very closely. Whether French, whether Dutch, they are interwoven. So how can then the passion of the people for independence on both sides, since they are one people, how do we overcome that issue when one authority considers French St. Martin to be in a department of France and Holland the Hague considers the Dutch to be um, advancing towards full independence? That is an issue that needs to be discussed. Yeah, we have never looked at it that way. Can I ask you if you studied this before you came here? You seem to speak of St. Martin as if you live here. <laughs> I live in the Caribbean. I've been around for um, nearly 20 years no, as no, Prime Minister. When you describe the construct, <laughs> it's so well done. Um, I couldn't help but ask if you studied this, but I appreciate that. Uh, I learned a lot from the gentleman who, oh, I, oh, who, who are my host. Yeah. And this morning we, do, we did have some discussions. By the way, folks, let me let you know that uh, the Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas is here under the auspices of the Independence for St. Martin Foundation. They are the ones responsible for having him, having him here. And I believe tonight, if I may jump ahead, and if um, Mr. Jones would allow me to, uh, I think the people of St. Kitts and Nevis would have an opportunity to talk to him later tonight, I believe, in the St. Peter's area. And then tomorrow evening, uh, uh, Soil, yeah. That's the name of the, the, the uh, location where the, uh, the Honorable Dr. Denison Douglas will be, and he would appreciate very much the opportunity to address the people of, uh, of uh, St. Kitts and Nevis who are part of this community. All right, and uh, don't forget that tomorrow evening you have the opportunity to also toss your questions to him in regards to uh, the issue of independence and uh, emancipation, and we are so happy to have him here. I wish I had more time to talk to him. <laughs> Doctor, let me ask you a question. Yes. How has the challenge been seeing St. Kitts and Nevis move forward the way it did and uh, build the kind of economy that it now has when at one point we on St. Martin used to go over to St. Kitts as one of the places where we can get certain things that we need for this community and now you find people of St. Kitts and Nevis move here for a great economy. Well, there is an even balance now in terms of the economy. But when you see that moving forward, how did it feel as a leader in your country and, and uh, to see the changes as, as uh, they present themselves moving forward? I always had a marvel in looking at St. Martin so small in terms of its physical landmass. Having come from, as we would say, the same background, geopolitically, as St. Kitts and Nevis, but being so vibrant in terms of its economy. And I've had the opportunity to look at several countries, together with my cabinet members, to look at several countries in terms of economic development. How do we really find the right model to advance our country, to bring to our people what they yearn for in terms of their personal development and advancement and greater prosperity, especially for the generations to come? And St. Martin was always one of those that we looked at. When we took the decision, having gone to independence back in 1983, we looked at sugar agriculture. That was the mainstay of the economy at that time. We saw over the years a failing sugar industry and therefore the need for a new economic model for our development. Tourism was then identified, hospitality and tourism services. And that was where we were when the former administration um, relinquished um, political office back in 1995. We were still at the throes of a dying sugar industry, which we tried for 10 years mm -hmm. to revive. 
because there was really nothing else as such. We did not even have 2,000 hotel rooms so that we were able to, uh, so that we were, we would be able, I should say, to attract reliable jet, direct jet services from the metropolitan countries. We were just behind. And we decided after 10 years in 2005, we could not go along any longer with this failing industry. The debt was escalating. Our people needed employment, alternative employment. They were not going into the sugar industry anymore to work. Mm -hmm. How do we find jobs? How do we really stimulate the creativity of our own young people? And so we went massively into the closure of the industry and transitioning from that period to where we are. I want to thank in particular my cabinet colleagues who served with me. I want to thank the public servants who understood where we were going and why we needed to go there quickly. I want to really give credit to them, mm -hmm. especially those who have been involved in the transitioning of the economy, those in the business community mm -hmm. who understood that apart from our reliance now on tourism and hospitality development, we needed at the same time to stimulate economic activity at the small business level. How to take our sugar lands that were in large junks as plantations, mm -hmm. subdivide it among the small farmers who were interested in now doing agriculture in a commercial way, not only providing employment for themselves, but to a large extent mm -hmm. providing food fresh vegetables and fruits for those visitors who we were in, inviting into our country. Mm -hmm. And then there was to give us support in two ways. There was the Citizenship by Investment Program, which we had inherited, which started back in 1984, the independence, but which was very dormant. And we found a way of stimulating that, creating new options and opportunities in the Citizenship by Investment Program, so that it provided a rush on the construction of new hotel rooms, thus providing opportunities for employment, and generated in the country economic activity that you'd never seen before. So that during that whole period, we were able to tackle the very high national debt which stood at one time at about 160-80% of GDP. When we left office in, nine, in 2015, it was down to just about 65 or so percent. We were able to stimulate economic growth unmatched in the Caribbean three years ago. By 2014, the economic growth, according to the IMF, was 7 plus percent, almost unmatched by any other country in the region. That's what we did. We wanted to make sure that our young people had opportunities to catch up mm -hmm. with the rest of the world. And we said, you know what, an economic, sorry, an, um, an education system must support the economic development policies. And we gave every single child in high school his or her own personal laptop computer with the, with the command learn to use this tool so you would advance us quickly to catch up with the rest of the world in terms of computer science and technology where you will develop that ability to structure your own apps and sell them even if you were still in school. A whole new education program mm -hmm. that provided skills for those who didn't appear to realize the academic potential at that time in the high school. Okay. Making sure that skills would be employed in the adult situation from which they can generate employment and look after their families. All right, to bring a cap on what we are doing now, uh, I would like you to take a look at St. Martin as it is, yes. and our aspirations, and just tell me which is more important going forward, or if they're equal, you tell me if they are, education or a strong economy when it comes to wanting to aspire 
uh, move to independence? Which of the two? If you're not educated, the economy can collapse. And the benefits of a very strong economy can eventually come to naught. The people must be educated. The people must be able to make informed decision about independence, about their future, about where they want to go. The people must be educated to the point where they will develop their own models of moving an independence and margin forward. Mm -hmm. The economy, yes, it will be good that the economy is doing well. But if there aren't opportunities to educate your own people, how can they become creative? How can they apply their creativities mm -hmm. to ensure that even in times of economic turmoil, because, you know, we are dependent, small independent countries, Although we are independent, we are still interdependent. Yeah. And the cycle of economic development, it, 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 it really wanes according to what is happening in the international community. So we must be able to educate ourselves, especially towards self-sufficiency, mm. where we have to make sure that at the end of the day, when things are not as rosy, we would have learned how to survive. Education must be reinforced by what you would have achieved economically and financially. And likewise, your education system must be able to impact positively on future economic development mm -hmm. for the in, in the future. Speak to our fears and doubts as it relates to uh, moving forward towards independence. Your final word. I would think that this is the time for the people of St. Martin to contemplate their future more than any other time. The world is becoming a much more difficult place to live in. We've seen changes in several countries in the international community, United States, We've seen it in France, we just saw it in Britain, where countries are becoming more concerned about restricting others from crossing their borders. Countries are becoming more inward looking. That is the reality of life. If countries are going to attempt to restrict and control who move into their countries, you must begin to look at your own country and what you need to do if your people become restricted in moving to others. Independence has to be a conversation for the people of St. Martin. You're doing the right thing. St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party, the parliamentary opposition from which I come, we stand ready because we believe we are able with our own experiences to add some voice to the conversation that the people of St. Martin must have. Mm -hmm. What one word do you want me to remember out of this conversation? Can I put it in your, put, can I put it in your mouth? Go <laughs> right ahead. Dialogue. Dialogue. Has to be dialogue. Well, thank you, Dr. Denzel Douglas. This time has been invaluable, especially to my listeners who had the opportunity to be able to hear you in this setting. Uh, I would like to let everyone know that he is available this evening in Soil. Soil is the name of the place. Soil, uh, in St. Peter's area. And uh, he relished the opportunity to be able to speak to those people out of St. Kitts and Nevis who are now citizens of this country. And you need to go out and take a listen to what he has to say. More so, tomorrow, Saturday evening, at the university, Dr. Denzel Lawless will be answering all your questions uh, at about 8 o'clock at the University of St. Martin, uh, Dr. Denzel Douglas. I really do appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I wish I had more time. Folks, Thank you. Thank out you of time, we've got to go. <laughs> and until next time, we invite you to come back here on Monday of next week and talk to us right here on Viewpoint. From all of us, thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.